To whom much is given, much is required. Part of that requirement is sharing. Culture is the heartbeat within our lives, and it's at the core of so many things. While we live in a time when we are starving for wisdom, I welcome you to your wisdom retreat at Culture Raises Us. There he is. There he is. Hey, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's guest, Drew Greer, um, is actually a former colleague from our early Nike days. Um, who literally played a significant role in creating and shaping the lifestyle footwear industry as we know it today, hands down. And I- I'm going to provide a lot more context to that statement shortly. But before I do, first, I want to welcome you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And I want to ask you to answer, you know, we always set it off with our signature question. Right. When you hear culture, what does that mean to you? Wow. It's so many things, particularly now. Um Culture is a way of life for people, but it's the roots of individuals. It encompasses mm-hmm. a lot of things, you know, from from customs to behavior to beliefs to values to symbols. Um, culture means that, you know, we breathe it, we hear it, we, we speak it, we live it, um, we wear it. Yeah. You know, it's how we dress. It's our language. It's music. It's the code. It's what we believe in. And what we don't believe in, so to speak. Right. So, so many different things. But one of the interesting things I think of today, we don't live in one culture anymore. Mm, speak on that. I, I'm part of a lot of cultures. I'm part of a football culture, student athlete culture. I'm part of a sneaker world. I'm part of hip hop. I'm part of snowboarding. So, I think it's more of a sauce, so to speak, mm. as it relates to culture, because we're sampling from all over. And obviously, hip hop is a core base, you know, core part of what we are. But then, you know, even within hip hop, there's different genres of cultures with, you know, backpacks versus, you know, no, da, 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 da. so I think there's all these different dynamics. And, you know, we don't fit in a box. I, I'm a former student athlete. I got my letterman jacket and that that isn't enough today. You know, what's mm. your social media following? What's, what's your content? What you talking about? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's your brand about besides, you know, 20 and 8? You know what I mean? Like, it, I, I think society requires much more. That's why, well, you know, jumping ahead, that, I think Jordan would struggle today. Wow. I, I, want, you, I, want, to, I want you to talk on that a little yeah, bit later because I, I think I get where you're going with that. that. Because a true athlete, it, it, it extends beyond the field. If you so, but Jordan, many would say, exemplified extending way beyond the field. In what way? I mean, come on, look at the brand that he created and the phenomenon of the, the no, movement. No, no. It was the particular time, and I've never downgraded any of his piece, but Iris's brand really should have been Benjamin Harris. It just didn't 1, happen based, based on the partnership and they, their lack of storytelling. So, But Jordan from the athletics, the athleticism, incredible. But my requirements extend beyond that, and that's why you know, uh, you know, Ali is one of my heroes. You know, mm-hmm. it's beyond the commercialism. Like, it's more than a dollar to me. That isn't rich to me. Money isn't just rich to me. There's, there's other things that play into the Agreed. dynamic 100%. for me. Because me, rich is different to every, everybody. Just like culture is different than, to everybody mm-hmm. as it relates to their culture. We're sampling. I'm curious. Yeah. I travel the world. I Every store, every pocket. Because I may find one thing that may enhance my life. Yeah, it's funny, in listening to you say that, I remember when we launched BBC, one of the things that we were trying to find was like this mantra or this calling that represented what the brand was about. And the thing that we landed on was wealth is of the heart and mind, not the pocket, which is essentially kind kind of what you just said. But I, I also love how you were talking about today, how you feel like we live in multiple cultures where coming up, we didn't probably feel that way or you thought that way. But I would almost argue, did we? But we just didn't know that they were these defined things called cultures. that no, we, we, hit we hit it. We hit it. You went to private school. Yeah. I'm getting into you later. I mean, not private school. Yeah. You went to elite school. But I'm getting into you later as it relates to your, your, your dope background. But we, 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 we hit it. It's kind of like now where you got white cats in L.A., not New York. New York's a different breed. You got a cats in L.A. talking about they've been listening to hip-hop since the 80s. And stuff. Where before, that was a hard divide. Yes, rock Agreed. and hip hop. I listen to rock in the closet. You know what I mean? I know some Jerry mm. Van Halen, Rush, Tom Sawyer, da 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 da. 
but it was on the low because I wanted to identify with being black, particularly with moving out to the suburbs. That's a whole nother game. Although I'm from yes. Compton and Watt, you get to the suburbs and you want to keep your brother card, da 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 But I think now it's such a much more open society. Like on the West Coast, we laugh at little Wayne and, and those cats that got in the skate and it was like supposed to be this fresh thing. We was doing that shit in the 80s. Because we right, were kids from right. Compton and Watts and, and, and inner city LA moving out to the suburbs. The other thing that changed LA, and we won't go on a tangent, is busing. When they started busing kids out of the hood, that's when you got the, the, the mix. That's when kids that's in right. the valley started listening to hip hop and the cats in that, you know, cats in the in the city got hip to vans and, and, and the other dynamics. And you have this cross pollination world, much like hip hop in your town, you know, downtown when Fat Five for you. I mean, that's the most beautiful thing when you have have the mix. You're right. No, no, you're right. And now I get why you say hidden because you're right. Coming up in that time, it was very much you can't let anybody know that you're dipping into rock and roll. Right. Like that wasn't going to be embraced right. in the quote unquote hood back on the block. But now it's very much part of the DNA to be exposed to so many different things. Like that's the new thing. Right. of being well-versed in all these different areas. I'm so I'm, now I get your context. It yeah. makes 1,000%. <laughs> and, and with that, you've already kind of teed up a little bit about yourself, given the stories that you're already talking about. But give the people a little bit more about you, high level. Um, obviously, I've been privy to know you for years, and I know a lot, but just a little bit about yourself. So uh, actually, parent, mother's from Compton, I mean, from Watts, dad's from Compton, but I was actually born in Trenton, New Jersey, military. Oh, wow. Um, so East Coast with me, you know what I mean? Um, but raised in L.A., originally in Linwood, which is just outside of Watson Compton. But as I stated, where my people are from, um, Linwood was where I sort of grew up. Pop Football was my heart. That That's what changed my life. That's what saved my life. My mother signed me up. Mm. My parents separated. That ended up sort of being the driving factor. It got me in with, with, with sort of Nike. So I moved to the suburbs, sixth grade, moved back seventh grade, Compton, and then ended up finishing junior high, high school um, in in the suburbs. So I was sort of this balanced sort of um, experience. Didn't get a scholarship out of high school, so I went to junior college in, in OC or Orange County. Uh, was a junior college All-American. At one point, set all the rushing records at my, my, my junior college. Then transferred to Ohio U, uh, two-time All-Mac, six-eighth of the nation, all-purpose yard. So the reason I'm driving that in is I'm really about sport. At the end of the day, like, right? You know what I mean? Like I, the culture piece is there, but I'm, I'm an athlete. But first, uh, graduated my family um, from college. I mean, first male. Moved back home. Uh, worked as a health educator for about a year. Realized government wasn't for me. Pocket protectors and metal death. So went back to grad school. Got my master's in sports administration. Interned at Georgia Tech, Atlanta Air, Freak Nick '94. I was there. That's right. Um, also the same, same year that I got hired by Nike. So I went from Freak Nick to moving out of Atlanta in June to get hired by Nike. Uh, first sales meeting, uh, connection flight through Salt Lake, then Portland. So imagine that transition <laughs> going no. from, from Atlanta to there. But start off at Eakin like yourself as a tech rep in the ground floor of, 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 of the company, writing reports in L.A. You're a dynamic market like New York, like myself. Uh, worked in product marketing, uh, sports was then called limited edition. Now it's Nike Sportswear. Set the early strategy and the early collabs and uh, various things that sort of went on. That went on influenced George as well as SB and a bunch of a bunch of other things. But then also worked on the storytelling side um, in LA, Amsterdam, uh, basketball as well from a US standpoint. Kobe m- jumping over to Aston Martin. Da 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 da. And I've worked it. Uh, Ralph Lauren. That Supra, was on your watch. Um, Ralph Lauren, Supra, Under Armour, da da da, da and consult for various other brands. But kind of have an agency called Brand I Am. We're a storytelling agency. Look at myself as sort of twofold, this Uncle Drew mold, uh, excuse me, the real Uncle Drew mold, and trying to shape and help the future generation of people that are trying to come in this industry or even from a, a student athlete and NIL standpoint. And then this brand arsonist that, you know, taking on assignments, you know, preferably outside of brands now, but at one point inside internally 
and you know taking what we're trying to solve or the brief or or even help developing on that side but definitely strategy in and you know based on the experience of my partner gene smith who you know we have a pretty balanced attack as relates to the full ecosystem and then some of that we partner with other entities outside if, if it sits outside our scope yeah no i love that humble um you know background and breakdown on yourself and you know, earlier when we first started, I made the comment that you played a significant role in creating and shaping the lifestyle of footwear um, as we know it. And, and it not only created jobs and opportunities within the brand like Nike, but it also literally spearheaded the creation of a multi-billion dollar industry. And we're going to put this on as fact. So I want to explain to those why I said that. And this individual um, was the one who had this vision to say, hey, look, let's take some of these models from different categories of sport and do colors and material executions on them just for consumers to wear. And like you said, this was the beginning of LE. And this literally birthed lifestyle footwear, again, not only for the category at Nike, not only for the brand of Nike, but the industry, but it then even created a culture that I think many have benefited from significantly, including myself. And this is, you know, this is the reason why many of us are literally where we are today. And, and people have careers in an area that literally didn't exist. And so while I know you did this within a brand that provides the resources and you have advocates like the Kelly Hibblers of the world, the Sam Siegels of the world, and the Jerry Lacos to advocate and support, I want to give you your accolades and flowers as the individual who had the vision and pushed in an environment that wasn't many of us in the room that looked like this, but had the idea and the thought to say there's something special here, which now is a billion dollar plus business. So I had to get that on record to say to you first and foremost. Thank you. And on my um, side, but on my side, I want to thank you and your community of New York for embracing me. Because mm. you taught me. At the time, this is pre-internet. You were That's the right. epicenter and are the epicenter of sneaker culture in my eyes regardless. And what I learned walking those blocks, hitting that train, hitting those retailers, you know, there was an expression, you know, somewhat of an understanding, but I learned the religion you know, mm. in those streets of, 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 of New York. And I got a story on that. And we'll go later on as relates to, to, to those dynamics, but New York embraced me. And again, it's other markets as well, but it starts there. Um, yeah. And it, works its and, way and, and it, it might lead into this, this next, you know, comment, because obviously with footwear playing such a significant role in shaping culture as we know it, it it'd be interesting to hear from you, given what I just said, you know, what particular moment in the, early formative years had you realized just how big and instrumental footwear culture was to shaping overall culture? <laughs> Summer of 89. Sen okay. Senior year of football before I check into camp, um, I hang out with my boy in, in, in Uniondale, New York. And we go shopping at Jamaica Ave in the Coliseum. That's right. And when I walked in there and I saw the flavors and colors, I felt like I had an experienced life show. I felt like a whole world had been denied. I, you were me. today years old. You were today years old. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was blown away like, you know, like I thought I seen everything, you know, because on the West Coast, we're primarily footlockers and sporting goods. We didn't That's have right. really many individual, you know what I mean? It's competitive. So they buy more, you know, aggressively in the Caribbean room. I mean, there's just all these dynamics. When I went in there and just see the whole layout, you know, this more Slauson was cracking or any of that stuff on the West Coast because our, our swap meets on the West Coast is a lot of bootlegs. Uh, right. it, you know, particularly from an apparel standpoint, this cast their whole life don't realize they went, <laughs> that that ain't the real uh, uh, ni Nike. That? Nike. <laughs> Nikes, Nikes. Nikes. Yeah. That's Nike. <laughs> that ain't the real Nike. You know what I mean? So, and I was just, you know, the, the reason it was so important is because when it fast forward and I took over what was then called limited edition, which is now sportswear, and I was in New York, 
You know what I mean? I wasn't lost in surprise. I knew what it was. I knew what I was doing. Right. I knew I needed to continue to be curious and stay humble that I didn't know it all because I could turn the corner and see something that just changed my perspective at, at any given moment on any given trip. Like, you know, build up and think I have it and then you, you lose it because there's just so much there that sort of inspire what, what, what the products. I mean, you guys don't have cars. West Coast, it's our cars yeah. and our rims. That's right. Your, your your sneakers are your currency. You get on the train, you know, what is it? You know, when he starts right. talking about what size and all, you told him, not yours. You know what I mean? Because he may be, right. I don't know. You know Facts. You, you, you know, I learned this. I didn't live it. I learned it. But You learned that's, it. That's right. My, that was my approach with the product. I never tried to front like I'm a New Yorker or I'm a snooper sneaker hat. What I will tell you is I'm an athlete. And I balled that's right. I balled my shit first. Then the That's right. fly perspective, but from the culture standpoint, there's so much I just learned in New York, just various capacities with various people. Because I, I mean, I was just curious and I wanted to get it right. You know I mean? Well, you were also you also had a respect for it, and you were open to learning what you did not know. Right. I didn't try to know it all, and that was the thing. That, that's but right. I'll tell you one thing that did embarrass. When I got to New York, and white boys knew more about hip hop than me, I had a problem. And I had I like I did not like I had never seen this because you know our, our typical you know white you know consumer that is beach based it was rock it was that separation right. but hip hop had had just taken over New York metro uh, everywhere that everybody owned and that's why I was mentioning earlier New York sort of consumer said a little bit different as related to that. But I was just blown away like how does money know like. I bet it's so like I need to go all the to nuances, hip-hop. all the nuances. Right, but New York is in general that way with music, even before the internet. You guys had a, an IQ on that history, on who produced what, and dynamics. It was just in a, in a whole different space. Basically, wasn't yeah. at the center of the culture. Yeah, and 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 so when you, when you talk about the culture here, you know, culture can be either such a broad or yet specific mm-hmm. term, right? Depending on the conversation. Mm-hmm. And I know you spoke on what culture means to you at the beginning, yeah. but in your in, in your opinion, were there individuals though who played a role in shaping it in your eyes? From a hip hop, I mean, from a sneaker standpoint, either. I mean, because again, I we're talking culture, sneakers. but culture is all encompassing of all these different pillars and levers, right? I, mean, I can just do sneakers because it's so many different. There's so many different. Now I'm talking about snowboard. I'm talking about Jake Burke. But from a sneaker right. standpoint, for me. I didn't live in New York, so obviously the Frazier piece, but it really was Run DMC, Jordan, even though I'm not a Jordan fan, but they had they had US TV, so we was watching them throughout, especially in those door rooms. Hip hop culture. Um, as well as I would say, you know, people think I'm crazy even though they sort of left. I think East Bay had a lot to do with escalating. Sneaker culture. No, speak on that. Speak on that. Like because it. I don't think a lot of people even know the significance of what that was for us then. Yeah. So from an East Bay standpoint, I can't really speak on it from a Yeah, I can speak on it sort of from everywhere. When I went to college, East Bay was like the internet then. When you got that catalog, it was a currency because you got to see colors and teams and other places that you didn't see anywhere. And that was all part of the hunt, trying to find what somebody didn't have so you could be different and, and, and sit differently. I wish some more of that went on at retail now. Some of these stuff is premeditated, pre-baked, pre-cooked, yeah. those dynamics. I wish stuff would just show up at retail more versus it being calculated. You already got them hooked, but just, especially if you want to save some of the brick and mortars, is that, that's the currency you can give them that requires people kind of like, you know, you're a basketball player touching the backboard, but touching the footwear wall on their, on their way home, making sure they didn't miss anything. That's right. You know, so... I want you to unpack something, and it's really what I call the responsibility mm-hmm. uh, that brands who capitalize off of black culture, and what do they have to do to do it with integrity? You know, with or without naming names, do you also see, still see some of these missteps happening in the category today? I just think in general, you, you have a responsibility, us as individuals or people or, you know, brand, of making the culture better. You're not there yeah. just to take or just to be take. Uh, a pedestrian or civilian. The culture is encompassing, and if you're really about it, you're giving in some type of you know way, even if it's just in a su- supportive way. If you don't have it in you, sort of from a from a creative standpoint, um, 
I think from a brand standpoint, they need to build that same culture into their brands. Mm. See, the the, the 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 sneaker industry was a sporting good industry. It became a cultural industry, but you still had the same leadership up top that didn't want to give up those reins, much like slavery in the Civil War. That's what that was about. Mm. <laughs> the, the slave owners didn't want to give up the power they have. It's sort of natural in- human instincts, and that's what's going on. You have these you know, at guard, there's no way. We represent 13% of the population. We influence more than 50% of the sneaker industry, but you see nowhere close to that 13 or 50 in any of the dynamics when it comes to board, senior leaders. You know, why aren't there, I, I talk about this all the time, why aren't there any athletes on these boards if we're about sport? Why is it, you know, any members of hip hop on any of these? Because that's the all dime. And then they have a responsibility, not just to get the bag and 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 the the, the monthly track right. on product, you have to make the whole that brand accountable, and then we're going to hold mm-hmm. you accountable. And that isn't what's happening right now. And it's it's it's, it's a it's a good old boy boat ride, and it, it mm. plays into you know it, it starts up top and it plays into the culture itself. But it's starting a sporting good. I get that, but we need to get past that. And it's in That's the right. billions of dollars, and there's ways you can impact it. And the one of the first ways is making sure that your company has the proper diversity what's in there we're not looking for charity that's right we're going to make the company better as well as better. as well as it's the right thing to do like i don't want charity mm-hmm. because charity goes away that comes in that's right if your brand is all based off of charity you're not going to get the third and fourth purchase you may get the first two but you're not going to get anything you know sort of after that and then you know earnestly respect and that's still your mm. actions versus you you you, you don't see it now you you, you just it's 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 a transaction. It feels very yeah. transactional, sort of the things that even the commercialism of it. You know, yep. tech has a shoot like that shit makes no sense. Is that like is the money going to something? Like what's the bigger play? The Black History shoes, like you know, the 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 the, the, the L L G A G B N and all that. So I mean, it's all these dynamics, but what's the dynamics of adding the additional sort of storytelling to it? Um, you know, and they're so busy on the collabs. I think, you know, they could have done a better job in outdoor and walking and other categories that they could have possibly worked into adding the lifestyle piece as an influence to grow, you know, to grow the business differently. Um, I, I think black owned boutiques, like, which are becoming almost extinct, which is yeah, crazy. Recently they've expanded, but I've been banging on them for about 10 years with it. Not that I feel like I'm doing anything, but from a f- spiritual sense, I feel like it's worth it. But that makes no sense that we're not part of those dynamics. Even going into the, the management of those territories, that even when you get in those territories, there aren't more people of color that are running them. And we know it. That's it right. It may be different now, but you know darn I era, that was where the big business was, so everybody was hovering around that. But when it came to community, you know, saying people weren't there. <laughs> That's right. No, and and this feels like a great segue into what you've spoken about with regards to some case studies um, you've been working on within the industry. I think one of which is is a fila situation. Do you want to provide some insight, kind of, on that work? So when I when I talk in you know, you know, kind of what I'm I'm pushing is the sneaker industry must die, not in a violent way, but a reinvented way in a, a diversity inclusiveness and empowerment but as it relates to the challenges that we've and compromised and uh, marginalized as it relates to this industry this feel of situation that my agency just went or is in the middle of I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the end of but it, it seems like it's the middle of and this thing is going to continue to go on show you what sort of the, the, the type of redlining that we deal with in the industry uh, and and, and the, the challenges we have to face and the things we, we have to overlook in some cases, but I, I refuse with this. So Fila, um, in desperation, contacted me in, in, in late August, September, seeking help um, celebrating their 50th anniversary in sport. And at the time, they wanted to celebrate 50 years of hip-hop, which is you know being celebrated this, you know, yep. which is now this year. Yep. And... Yep. Um, Basically, I was in Delaware visiting with one of my OG alums from my college, and like I had to change my plans, you know, flexibly, you know, thinking this was going to work out, you know, be a good opportunity, and rush my way back to New York, 
for them to kind of give me a sign, it's like, you know, I need to see the dynamics of where you were going into the season. This is fall, uh, winter of this year, third quarter, you know, coming up. Um, so when they, they, I get there, there's nothing, no assets, no, like you get this, no consumer profile, no product profile, no, like nothing. nothing. Credit. Like, I'm like, how does this happen? And you got two, a senior VP of merchandising and a senior VP of, 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 um, of a brand. I'm like, how are these people getting these jobs? How are they keeping these jobs? They're like, and particularly from a FILA standpoint, there's no representation of people of color in there in senior leadership mm. positions. So from that brand standpoint, like it's perfect example kind of what's going on. Like the, for that to go on makes, makes no sense. So give me the assignment. I asked them and I need these 10 things, which I end up eventually getting two of the 10 things, but I'm into doing a great job. I'm going to kill it. And then, you know, go move forward. And, you know, I got a new client that I'll be able to help because you know, business yeah. is good. Nobody hears anything. So to speak, everybody's a genius. Mm-hmm. So I got the concept together, over-delivered, came up with this concept called 50 Love, uh, which we know we get, it applies, di- dynamic. Um, you know, the, the cut, there's so many dynamics in the cut part of the shirt. So the, the person that contacted me was from sales, senior VP of sales. So, you know, they don't understand the value, complete value of our work, but he needed something to go to Foot Locker because he had no concepts, da 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 so he needed to go sell the concept in Italy, which he did. But prior to him actually going to Italy and during my preparation phase, I contact one of our former colleagues who's working at, at, at FILA on the innovation side to try to get some insight on what's, what's, what's going on with um, you know, FILA, what's their future what's from a product standpoint so I can integrate it in the concept. You know, he plays me 007 that I call it. Those who worked at Nike know who I'm talking about. Played me. Well played. Played me like, oh, you don't work for Philo, so I'm not going to do anything. You know, I'm, I'm not giving you. I said, you know, me, cool. All right. So I'll continue okay. to kill it. So when I get to Italy and before my contact, who's senior VP of LaSalle's, goes to present the concept internally, he shares this with me later. Our former colleague 007 says in the meeting, because of, you know the work came from my agency that he doesn't want a ghetto chase. Mm. Ghetto chase, interesting. Yes. Okay, yes. Yes. I, I was I hadn't heard that one either, but um, but that, you yeah. know, but a lot of stuff goes around goes on and communicated when we're not around. <laughs> so this is right. right. one of the first times that it, it, it got back to me. So you know I proceeded to you know kill him, did it, but they end up loving the concept and want to take it global. So they come back and. We had an agreement. They paid me for my time and not my experience when I did the initial mm-hmm. work, which is completely out my time, but I'm trying to be flexible. They came back when they wanted to take it global. And because of the sake of time and go to market and having meetings, I signed off some things where, you know, we're going to move forward, but, you know, here's a reduced deal. I can make the money up later on. They ghosted us. After we started, we, we, we had not, you know, so trying to be patient, I'm frustrated with my guy. So the president steps down. So the new president steps in. I know him. he follows me on LinkedIn like a, like a stalker. You know what I mean? He's in, he engaged in my, my, my content. So I hit him, congratulated right. him, you know, da, 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 da. And we got to get on a schedule. I love your storytelling. I, I know what you've done in the industry. So I ended up telling him I did 50 love two months later. He, uh, a month later, he states he didn't know I did 50 Love. They shared with me that in that meeting, they gave our agency and myself sort of announcement. But bottom line, it's been five months and I still haven't met with this guy. Wow. You know, really- and the concept is moving forward. Well, it was until I started taking a very aggressive internet approach. So I don't know. That's the problem is how do you take a concept globally? How do you never talk to the CMO or the people there? Why don't they give you a chance to deliver on the back half of the concept or uh, get a chance to bid if that's the case, which I think is funny if we developed it. And then right. how do you, because the logo incorporated their logo, plus I'm not dirty. I'm not going to get logo patent and play all that. Like we're working together. Like normally this industry works in solid faith. 
they went behind our backs and uh, registered the, the the logo that we developed that they didn't brief for that we over delivered on, and they, wow. they uh, trademarked it to be, be able to put on apparel. So what I'm saying is, even if they said they like, like, why would you move forward with a project and not incorporate the agency that developed it? Like that, that's just in principle the self is it is if there's nothing there, it's just wrong you, you you were opted you're, you you were opted out of an ip that you yeah, created and then how do you not address somebody that's done something racist that supposedly hr and everybody you know were involved by staying ghetto chasing like like for leadership that that isn't cool to to to, to use that as a script and and empower yeah the, the script within our community so as you know I'm not, you know, cats think, you know, like think I'm crazy in a tirade. I'm going, I'm not going to play the lawyer. Again. So I'm going to bang right. on you online until we can sit at the table because this could be worked out because it's very cut and dry. They separated from the table. We had a lawyer, you know, brought in to get us to the table. First meeting that we had with them. There's nobody from their leadership team. It's just outside counsel and inside counsel. How offensive. They're asking us about their org. Like, how serious are you about results? They're asking us about money. Plain, yeah. They're asking us about money on the first call. I'm not. We're not ambulance chasers. If we got an issue that, you know, that, that the descriptive and the the racist dialogue that goes on in, in, your, in your brand, there's an issue there. And then yeah, there's an outstanding bill as it relates to we over delivered on work, did things in good faith, but even if they were just done by the book, taking somebody's concept and rolling with somebody else with it. Is it's just wrong. It's just it's just flat it's just out, flat out wrong. So you know, most people use LinkedIn like a library. I bang a little bit, and I'm I'm, I'm catching I'm catching attention versus you know having to pay pay a lawyer a thousand dollars an hour to to do because right now this is something that we can can can, can solve on our own. We're not changing that's right. But the, the, there's some things that need to be discussed, and they're they're playing this ghosting game. So if you're gonna play the ghosting game, you know. I got a little holler. I got a little follow. You know, that's, that's what I'm looking to do is share that. As well as we're so, using this as a moment to address the whole industry. And I've written a mm-hmm. letter to the industry. I don't know if you've seen that, but I've read a, a letter to the industry basically outlining our frustration sitting on the outside, marginalized in an industry that we built. We created. Yes. We, we created, built, and, and financed. <laughs> That's right. So, and as I as I hear you walk us through that case study, you know, a big part of this platform is providing the tools to the next generation of stewards of culture yeah. to figure out how they're going to shape, mold it moving forward. But it's essential to have a good background understanding of how we even got yeah. here, right? So, as you walk through that story, what what's the message that you would give to up and coming marketers or creators? who are likely going to be pursued by these same big sportswear brands, right? And, and what should they keep in mind, more importantly, when it comes to maximizing their potential and being properly compensated for their talents? Yeah. So the first thing is I, I, I think, like, if I could start over again and I was the Drew in 94, I'd figure out where what I want to gain from this experience. Got, yep. Understanding that you're getting paid to learn and having an exit strategy. I think the other thing in staying re- staying relevant, you have to stay curious, but you have to do something what I do now, practicing reverse uh, mentoring, where you know you realize that you can learn as much from the young people as they can learn from you from an old standpoint because there's a divisional right. thing going on. 1,000%. And then the other piece would be seek mentorship. Um, and you may have to trade that in because you don't know what you're getting. There's a lot of people I thought were senior there when I when I needed them. I, they, they couldn't help me. They were too far away from the business. Um, mm-hmm. the, the other challenge is even for people of color, that's the only thing I would tell these brands. Just because you, you hire somebody black doesn't mean that they represent the community, and we call that whitewashed. And- <laughs> Listen, say that again. That that You know, in some cases, that's almost the, even more dangerous than the other option. Yeah. Yes. 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 The whitewash is just because you're checking that box doesn't mean it aligns with the box that you're going to get that that you know build your business on and 
build your brand and those dynamics. And that has been the coach. But the problem is, is that either they're whitewashed or they're selfish or there's a generational gap from the older cats or us. If they operate differently, they some hand bones. Like, I mean, respectfully. Yeah. Like, they, they operate yeah. Yeah. differently than us and, you know, think we're loud and those dynamics, but they 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 can't Google nothing. You know what I mean? Like, where if they were right. just in reverse mentor, we both could be winning right now. And that never that 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 never sort of sort of happened. I mean, that that was my struggles inside. That you know, probably the the, the best person I had of, of 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 color put 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 milk in their tea. You know what I mean? They were mm. they weren't a black American. They were they were English American as white schools. I mean, and all that stuff matters from a mental standpoint. I've been depressed in this industry. There's there's there's, there's stories upon stories upon stories of, of of this going on, and I'm no victim. Or we're no victim, but at the same time, I ain't no punk, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm ten toes down, or whatever we got to do, we got to do. And if, if, if you know any of my actions online posted is you know somebody's gonna try to come after me, I I I'm down for a hunger strike in jail. You know what I mean? Like bring it. No, I I'm trying you, to change the industry. You. Most people inside, or most people in general, are scared, and that's why they continue to get away with it, and it continues to happen. Like. I'm asking consumers, media, everybody, look underneath the hood and see what it really is. See the track record of the most senior people. How long have they been at the brand? Are they new or are they not? You know, what What are the, like, you can look at the dynamics and see that it's not there. Look at 13%, but think about 50% and how much we influence the industry and where we're at. There's one brother that's the CEO that comes from outside the industry. Respect to him. Never have gotten time with him or any of that. But what about us that, you know, been here from the soil? That's right. That's right. You know, we, we, we often are faced, I think, with this paradox of art colliding with capitalism. And you're, and you're right. kind of alluding to the, some of that. And, and with culture, so many different aspects come from a true, pure, 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 pure place. So, so when business enters the picture, it can, what I think, definitely convolute it when it's not handled properly, right? right? So how do you think we can keep the intention of the purity of the art and the artists at the forefront. Um, it's it's, it's kind of twofold. It's on the artists as well, because artists got to decide if they go sell mm. out. So my my, deal, my 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 deal is that you got to come with elevated con- intent. Um, you got to operate from authentic and sort of innovative standpoint. But even even like way I operated at Nike, and just in general, the way I operate is. <laughs> try to get a runway to go on at all we do some of the other brands has been a challenge because they think we see dead people but that's a whole another conversation mm. um it's about creating room you know what i mean underground wow. party and when everybody hear about that party i'm creating another room i'm not trying to get people out this party mm. that means i'm doing dope shit so while yeah. you're, you're, you're scavenging on this phase one, I'm on phase two. And then when you find out about that, I'm going to three. And I may go back to one and it's hot again. Mm-hmm. But I'm continuing to create these rooms. Because that's what happened to basically Nike and Sports, where nobody cared. There's people that end up being VP right. that categories that used to diss the category that is just... I mean, an ice skater ended up being the the GM. Like what? I've the, seen that so many times. It's it's, so, it's pathetic. A Dutch ice skater ended up being the GM. Like what the hell? But um, <laughs> um, it, it, it's about to me. You got to continue to create rules versus creating rules. That's the dynamics mm. is going on right now with the collabs and the bolts and all of that stuff. My deal is okay, cool. Start putting shit back in stores in the major city and only let the secondary cities buy it online. Put it in a mm. vending machine. Think out the yeah, box. Like you can go analog. You can go back and forth. That's what we do. We remix. You know, you um I look at somebody like yourself. Um, I look at somebody like Mike Parker, um, who you guys worked super, super closely together. Um, and there's so many of you of the world who work in these spaces and I say are critical parts of creating substantial businesses and cultures. But yet you're not reaping the long term benefits and equity of these contributions. Let's keep it 1000 percent. Right. 
being on the other side of that, what would you have liked to have happen to you given all that you contributed and did? Um, the first thing is, you know, die. I'd want the organization to die. I would hope that my efforts, my extra efforts, my letting you have access to my culture that end up impacting the business. I would, I, I would, I would hope that the ind- the industry would die. Your company would die. When I say die, diversity, inclusion, empowerment, that didn't happen. That didn't happen on 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 any level as it relates to the dynamics. But I felt like I got taken advantage of as a as a young professional. As a young professional, I I, I definitely know I was was taken and I would handle it differently. And I was handling it pretty aggressive then, and they didn't like it as related because I knew the value, but I didn't know the the value, value. Now that you're in the billions, and you've acted like, like, there's no way I should have been instantly been a VP. Well, I, you know, and, and respectfully, if I can interrupt for a second, it's for me looking at it from the outside. It was it's way bigger than you getting a title. I feel individuals like yourself should be receiving some sort of royalty that comes from a bucket of money somewhere. I don't know where it comes from. Whether it's each brand is putting into it each industry is putting into it, where you should be receiving some sort of compensation for long-term generational wealth and equity because of what you started and what you did. That is not the fact that's happening, but there are individuals, but there are individuals who do not look like you, who are, as you said, what'd you say, skaters and, and, and all these different types of individuals who get these opportunities to then work in this space, manage these businesses, and they are getting the generational wealth and equity piece of it that certain individuals are not. I would get in the deeper into this and in the individuals, but some of them aren't with us anymore. And I, I don't like speaking into the debt that way out of respect, yep. but there's no reason why I couldn't have headed that category. SB came from what we did. Jordan came from right. what we did. And we weren't just doing our job. We were educating the company. We were on trends and things going on because this was pre-internet. Those guys, right. we put the brand, and then they end up splitting the brand into two different things: performance and sportswear. Like it, 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 it makes no sense. I, I, I can't erase the past, and I imagine early hip hop heads feel the same way. But I think diversity, inclusion inside, a simple thank you, even an internship program named in our honor. You know what I mean? That the targets H. It's more than just from a monetary standpoint. It's a moral the mark that so you can show other black leaders that work those hallways. You know, some of the pioneers that pushed us forward and we continue to push ourselves forward until you get that happy parity or happy balance within the diversity that you need within the company. Again, not from a charity standpoint, but it'll make the brand better. Most of these better. brands that are out here right now outside of Nike, the reason you suck is because you lack diversity. You don't empower people mm-hmm. of color. Nike does an average job, but you don't do anything. And that's why you sit here and lose. Under Armour, and that's all this guy not do. These guys would rather lose money than fuck with us or fuck with me, dude. That's fucking ridiculous. Right. I've had ex workers, yeah. guys I've trained, they're at the New Balances, that, that, that been at other brands that won't mess. I don't know what it is. I really don't know those mm. dynamics. Oh, I respect the dynamic, but the situation of the ghetto chasing, they do other ways. We just don't get hold of the stories. There's no way mm. that. There's as many of us out here that should be scrapping and fighting. And luckily, there's a lot of new brands coming up, as well as I'm going to do my own brand, um, athletic brand right. out here, to, to, because I can't be beating all these drums and not taking that approach. That's right. And I, if somebody stepped up and, and, and helping us with it, that's a former president of one of the the other sneaker brands was positive. But somebody looking back and, and, and trying to do the right thing with, with a good intent. But... It's it's just yeah it's just it's just sad those dynamics and you see a lot of the brothers and you want to be happy that there needs VP roles but it's like dude there weren't even no VPs back then when we were there there was Larry Miller that's right from a, a Jordan standpoint that is what it is and then there was Trevor that ended up it wasn't until the 2000s I didn't even aspire for those dynamics but in doing the right thing there should have been room or looping back or some of those dynamics I mean frequent flyer miles. Something should have went on as related to that. I mean, one of my disappointing things that happened at the most highest level, sort of like it's like the highest person 
within the company, but there was a role I was supposed to have in market that I didn't really get funded for. And then they ended up bringing an older white gentleman that came from a London retailer and had the, you know, the, the advantage of living anywhere in the world to basically work on what I built. Right. With, with, with all the resources all to the do resources so. resources to do so. You know, even Tinker, who's earned that? I think the impact of stuff we made was on a Tinker level that I should have been able to do isolated projects on my own and not working with the hairball and all these dynamics. You know, right. that, that, that's just some people can work inside. So some people live for that. That's all they want to do is work those all ways. That's right. Other people want to make sure that you, the brand is positioned right with, with, with the culture, knowing what's going on in the future. And I feel like in a lot of ways, me being in those streets because I wasn't in those halls playing that game made it so I, and then because yep. I didn't want to live in Oregon, but that's an excuse because I know there's individuals that, 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 that have, have been created roles outside the box. Yeah. You know, and, and you, you talked about culture in that, and, and culture is, whether we consciously acknowledge it, um, it is a very sacred thing. Very, very sacred thing. And as contributors, uh, consumers, and, and profiters, profiteers of the culture, I think we have to ask our, our, the question, like, what do we owe it? Is, is there something that we owe the culture in some of these behaviors and these actions? Is there something that we owe it to do better by it? Word. Restrict, preserve, elevate. Mm. That's what we owe it. To me. We have a, you know, from a respect standpoint, you got to respect the rule, the code, the, the way about it. You know, you know again, I, I look at it as a soft sort of gumbo of, of, of cultures that come together that make our, our, our individual own. And there's places that we meet, but mm -hmm. there's places that I go that, that, that you don't go or, or cultures that I'm a member of that you aren't, but there's still a base commonality. And I would say hip hop and sports is a, is a part of that, is it is it center of that. Then I would say preserve, preserving the history, preserving the you know, preserving these codes, preserving those dynamics so that it stays kind of where it is now. It's kind of like the current hip hop. I don't like a lot of it, but it's not for me, and I don't try to diss it because I know at one point people didn't like my hip hop. So how how That's am right. I to, to to kid to continue that? But then every once in a while I catch something, I was like, okay, this cat's fine, or you know, I catch these pieces. I try to respect it on on its term. And then the last point is elevate. You didn't just come to look around and sample and take or be a mannequin or dynamics. How can you take it to the next, you know, to the next level? Yeah. How can you elevate it? And if you're looking to elevate it, you're going to do the right thing from the right place versus just take from it and drain it. Yo, I think those three seeds are, are, are spot on. And, and I hope people are grasping the, the significance of it and, and the direction in which you're trying to take things with it because, you know, to be quite frank, you know, you're not for everybody, nor is anybody. Nobody's for everyone, right? And I do think at times that might have been a hindrance for people to really be able to absorb the great gifts that you were bringing to the table and the things that you were doing and the things that you wanted to do. Um, but that's no excuse for people taking full advantage of that greatness and maximizing it in a way where those who are truly part of creating it no longer can sit at the table to continue to shape it. And so I hope that in all the things that you're now doing, there's an opportunity for you now to continue to help shape because I still think obviously you have a great eye and understanding for market, consumer, um, the heartbeat of what makes these things tick, that you will get that opportunity once again to do so. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I'm not here to 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 uh, service everybody. I just want to do the right thing and do dope shit. Mm. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, and you, you're you're completely right. I'm not looking to be for everybody. And you know, a lot of people get stuck on that. And it's like you know, if you try to please there, you're going to be anybody. That's even a brand. Exactly. You got to have a please anybody, whip. not even you yourself. Have a target consumer and. If I would have operated the way they wanted to operate for me to get the monetary gains and titles and the stuff, I, I'd be a crackhead right now. Yeah. Being honest. Facts. And, yep. you know, if, 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 if me not being a crackhead makes it so that I'm, you know, I, I'm not for everybody, uh, that, that's okay with me. Well, dog, I, I can't thank you enough 
for not only this time, um, but but really what you've done. And I mean, even for my own career, I will never forget, we were at a sales meeting. I was in Eakin, you were already doing LE. And it was because of you that I went into entertainment marketing because you knew of the role that they were trying to create in New York. And you were like, Aster, look, you don't, you don't have to conform into the natural path after the Eakin role, which was either sales or do what? Come to Portland, become an APLM, and live out in, in Beaverton. And you said, I think this could be a good look for you, and you really need to explore this, bro. It's about to happen. It's going to be in New York. You'd be a good fit. Go non-traditional. And it was because of you that I took that role. And I think you even threw my name in the hat with all the powers that be of this would be a great candidate for this role. So for that, I want to thank you as well, because I literally remember that moment going down an escalator at a sales meeting when you were walking me through that. So your impact, bro, goes way beyond the products that you've touched. There's also people and obviously industries and now major businesses that you play a significant role in. Um, and for that, I do want to thank you once again, bro. Uh, I, I appreciate that. that. That means a lot. Uh, but more importantly, I like how you've been able to continue to remix yourself. And if it's going with other mm -hmm. brands or hitting other industries or, or moving, you know, the, incredible, the dynamics, particularly as it relates to sort of this as well. I love what's happening with your daughter. If you don't know what's sort of going on, you guys, I appreciate you sort of Googling it. I didn't realize that you went to LaGuardia. Yeah. Yeah. I went to LaGuardia yeah, Performing yeah, Arts High School. In New York, yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that. Very impressed. I went to public school. <laughs> no, not in the distance. <laughs> That's sense, right. I just like hearing sort of your background and those dynamics. But I really love the show and I love what you're doing. I think this is an outlet. Keep going. And uh, let, let, let's get this right, brother. I appreciate you, man. Indeed. Thank you, dog. We truly appreciate your support because it helps us fulfill our mission of promoting cultural awareness and personal development. Please click the subscribe button below to help ensure and solidify our mission.